and welcome and thank you for coming to the 31st Annual Alumni Awards and Golden Cyclones Dinner. The purpose of the Cassidy Alumni Association is to advance the school's mission and the school's need for leadership, volunteer commitment, financial support, and communications. The Alumni Association builds and maintains relationships connecting Cassidy and its alumni no matter how young or old and no matter how near or far. Since 1987, Cassidy School has recognized graduates who have made exceptional contributions to their fields of work and their communities. Tonight we honor one recipient for each of the three awards. Young Alumni Achievement Award, Alumni Achievement Award, and the Distinguished Graduate Award. But I was just your average Cassidy student, or maybe less than average. As my mom so nicely put it the other evening, who would have thought? <laughs> The bottom line is smarts did not get me my dream job. Determination did. And I have my parents and both my, both my parents and the Cassidy community to thank for that. Whether in the classroom or in the swimming pool, coaches and teachers instilled in me a strong work ethic and the mentality that you can achieve anything in life as long as you set your mind to it. So thank you. It's been a demanding year to be a journalist, but what happened in Las Vegas reminds us that our work is important work. Every day I have both the privilege and the responsibility to let loose a little more truth into this world. You see, reporters tell you what happened, investigators show you why it happened, get you closer to the truth. I often wonder, where will we be in 30 or 40 years from now? Will stations like mine be able to fund an aggressive army of investigators to fight for that public information? Or will I be out of a job? Will future generations even understand the difference between investigative reporting and somebody with an iPhone and a Facebook account? And will they care? Will we be in a better place than we are today? I don't know. But I do know we must continue to do investigative journalism. We must continue shining a light on areas that many prefer be kept dark. We must be willing to question conventional wisdom and the prevailing narrative of the day. When our nation's leaders lie, we must call them out. We must expose those negligent state regulators, businesses, drugs, and armed trafficking networks. We must follow the narco money on both sides of the border. Because if we can shine a light on wrongdoing, we can become a more informed world, a better world. both honored and humbled to be here tonight accepting this award and I thank Cassidy uh, for this recognition. I have to admit though that thinking about what I was going to say tonight has caused me more stress uh, than presenting to 1,500 young sailors at a required stand-down briefing before they could go on leave. That being said, uh, it's important to note that Cassidy always challenged me to do more. And you can say what you want about algebra, and, and we all do. Uh, but I want to say that I use what I learned in algebra every single day. Seriously. I learned perseverance. And, Finding answers to difficult problems takes time and often isn't easy. So from the introduction, uh, you already have a pretty good idea of what I do. Working to break the cycle of child abuse and family violence, I am a stone catcher for these clients. I am committed to sow the seeds of compassion, to give the gift of hope, to facilitate a conversation that allows them to open their eyes so that they can recognize their own value and then the value of others. So they can choose to create new pathways for their lives and their families. 
Nearly every client that I work with was an at-risk child. And if the cycle of abuse isn't broken, that at-risk <coughs> child becomes an at-risk parent. And that cycle continues. I could go on for the whole evening, uh, but I'm just going to end it here and just say how much I appreciate this award. And the greatest reward that I've ever been given is the simple opportunity to help generations of families learn how to have healthy, nurturing relationships. Thank you so much. Uh, what an honor it is uh, to be able to uh, come before this wonder, be in this wonderful school to present uh, my best friend with the Distinguished Graduate Award, George Corbin. He did some remarkable things in the last 40 years as a civil trial lawyer, not just a litigator, but a trial lawyer. First, he's been inducted into the American College of Trial Lawyers. And any trial lawyer who knows what that is would give their left arm to be inducted into that organization. It's by invitation and elected election only by a national committee. Since 2011, he's been recognized in Chambers USA Magazine as the top trial lawyer, one of the top trial lawyers for business trial in America, not just Oklahoma, but in America. Additionally, another national publication, The Best Lawyers in America, George has been recognized in that publication since it's almost its inception as being the number one business trial lawyer in America and in Oklahoma. Since 2006, he's been recognized as the, one of the top 10 lawyers in the state of Oklahoma, trial lawyer in the state of Oklahoma. And in 2016, he was voted the number one trial lawyer in this state. He was put on this magazine. <laughs> And it wasn't photoshopped. That's how George really looks. He's a, he's a handsome dude. He always was. And he says he loves to argue. That was a surprise to me. I never thought George had an argumentative bone in his body. Those are pretty lofty achievements for a fellow who played basketball at this wonderful school had never made it through the first quarter of a basketball game without getting thrown out by the referees. <laughs> George, come on up. I've got to make one observation first. And it just came to me when I came in here and I started meeting people like Ken Hoffman, Paul Malloy, saw Steve Parker. There are a number of people that are sitting there right now, my friends from Cassidy that I grew up with, that are thinking, if I can come up and get this mic and start telling stories on George Corbin, <laughs> he is going to have the shortest tenure of any Cassidy distinguished graduate. <laughs> and so I, I'm not, I am not going to cede the mic. But, <laughs> But seriously, I mean, Cassidy really has meant a lot to me. It, it's meant a lot to me when I was there in, from 50, 1957 to 66. But, but it's meant a lot to me after I left since then to the present. I mean, both, both times, both ways. You know, when I was here, it was, it was, you know, it was wonderful. It was my friends. It was the academics that were just fantastic. It was sports. And 
I mean, I, I really, I just, I loved every second of it. And I made friends for life. I mean, Cassidy gave me an opportunity to be in this place, meet people, and become their friends, not just for the, you know, the four years of high school, but for my life. My, my wonderful wife, Laura McConnell Corbin, who Jim talked about a while ago, who wins all the arguments in our house, <laughs> she has, that's because she's such a good trial lawyer, She's heard so many of my Cassidy stories, and the same ones that she tells me she's beginning to think that she was there. <laughs> so, so Cassidy was. It's been so important to me, you know. Then and now, it's you know, it gave me one thing after another. But, but, I think the last point I want to tell you is there was something even more amazing about Cassidy, and that is. I got a, a deja vu. I got a, like a do-over. I got to relive my Casty experience through my kids who went to Casty. I've got five kids, Michelle, Jay, Will, Kevin, and Janie, that went to Cassidy. And, and I got to relive my high school experience with them academically, uh, athletically, know their friends. I had the same, yeah. I had, they had the same coaches that I had when I was at Cassidy. I mean, they, they had, Hoot Gibson coached Will, uh, Glenn Sears coached Will and Kevin. So 20 years after I was here at a, at a place that I loved and a, a thing, a, a time that was just wonderful, I got to sort of reconnect with Hoot, reconnect with Glenn Sears and be on campus and experience it. So, you know, Cassidy's been important to me um, and I mean that seriously. So I'd say, Thank you, Casty. You know, thank you, Jim and and Laura, who kind of behind my back, sort of surreptitiously put me up for this. But it, it is it is meaningful to me, and, and I I do appreciate it. And then thanks to my kids for letting me, um, you know, relive this wonderful experience uh, that I had here. So and and thank you all for being here and putting up with us. So. <laughs> I do want to recognize and take just a minute to recognize a special group of alumni. Um, the class of 1967 is having their 50th reunion and they will now join the Golden Cyclone Club. <laughs> so if you will indulge me, yes. If you'll just indulge me for one minute, let me set the stage for a couple of facts. Some might be true, some might not be, but you may disagree with me. But this class was known to be a little bit rebellious. They think in a good way, but their senior year they didn't want to wear uniforms, so they protested, and I'm told they won. And so the entire senior year they wore jeans, which was quite unheard of at the time. <laughs> Not true? I don't know. They didn't like the senior lounge, so they made their own in the lockers of their buildings. They got busted and they had to take down the curtains, they had to take down the furniture and put it all back together. They decided to dress up like Hell's Angels for, for a Halloween costume and ride their bikes into chapel. Mm, Father Barnes was not very amused. I don't think that went very well. However, they generally pushed the envelope as far as they could, but they kept their boundary with, within respect. They respected their teachers and now more than ever, look back at the incredible impression their teachers made on their lives. Teachers who at the time felt impossibly hard sometimes mean, now feel like they are the reason that they turned out successful in the ventures of life that they each pursued. Teachers like Mrs. Tuck, Mr. Gill, Mr. Mrs. Porch, and many more, all whom inspired them to reach further than they thought they could, to believe in themselves, to dream, and to love learning. They were a tight class and continue to this day to be a tight group. I would like for the members of the class of 1967 to please stand and let us officially welcome you to the Golden Cyclones Club. In closing, whether we look back to the first graduating class in 1951, when we graduated five 
and had just over 120 students enrolled at Cassidy, or whether we consider the more than 900 students we have today, one thing remains true and obvious. Our mission has held steady. We prepare students to succeed. Congratulations again to our award recipients, Charlotte, Susan, and George. And to all of you, thank you for coming tonight. As we leave tonight, I borrow from our past, and as you said, Porter, it's important to remind you, always remember who you are and what you represent. Thank you.